my name is Meepleless and this is Literally Graphic. And today we're going to be talking about a graphic novel called The Story of Sex, a graphic history through the ages. Needless to say, this involved a lot of heavy editing on my part to bring you any of the artwork whatsoever. So please appreciate. The Story of Sex, A Graphic History Through the Ages is an unsurprisingly French nonfiction comic written by prolific sexologist Philip Brennett, illustrated by Letitia Corin and translated by Will McMorrin. And while I did enjoy it for the most part, this book still managed to check off every item on the list I like to call what not to do when writing nonfiction comics, which does render me, for better or for worse, more skeptic of the entire book overall. Starting off with the artwork, I did appreciate Corin's style very much. For a nonfiction graphic novel about sex, you needed to hit a very precise mark of being descriptive, but perhaps not as pornographic as it certainly could be. Overall, I felt like her character development was pretty delightful on its own account. And Corin's artwork also matches the overall informative but irreverent tone that Brennan seems to have been going for very well. Well, only really a single complaint. Uh, my one complaint about the artwork was a pretty major one in my opinion. Um, and that had to do with the representation of people of color in this comic, which could have been either Brennan or Corin's fault or some combination of those two, so I'm not sure who to blame here, but it is a huge issue that I wanted to bring up. That is the fact that um, at the beginning of this history, everyone is pretty brown and pretty hairy in their kind of pre modern human sense. And then as we go along, everyone quick quickly whitens out, even to the point where Egyptians and modern Europeans look fairly similar. Literally only the most primitive people are dark-skinned, with maybe a very few exceptions in the modern day. Not only did this feel like a really, really ra racist representation, it also felt pretty historically inaccurate, since even with the Roman Empire and, you know, modern civilization. There are lots more brown and black people uh, than were represented in this comic. And then on top of that, after I thought f about it for a little bit, um, I am pretty spoiled by Ojoy's sex toy webcomic and the sex and disability podcast, but it would have been really nice to maybe just in the background somewhere shown some people who were disabled as part of, you know, sex and sexual history, or maybe even talked about something to do with that as one of the sections. But that is something that generally seems to have underrepresentation anyway, so perhaps less malicious and more just ignorance and laziness on the part of the original creators. Combined with the problematic uh, skin coloration issue, uh, the entire arc of this comic is based on a very Eurocentric and Western view of history, um, and Brenna does misgender at least one transgender person. So an SJW sex positive fest this is not. Obviously my personal chemistry with the author is not necessarily central to my reviews. I do try to be a little bit more objective than that even if pure objectivity is obviously something I don't believe in as possible. Since I am trying to deconstruct the white supremacist narrative that I was raised in, I am particularly sensitive to the ways in which this author seems extremely, extremely biased. I mean, you could probably drive a semi-trailer through this guy's gigantic blind spots. That said, looking at this as someone who was raised in the West, uh, it did. I did feel like it gave some uh, framework for under, better understanding the prudish culture I was raised in. That said, again, these biases, since this is a nonfiction book where, you, where the author is not necessarily honest about his biases, uh, but is trying to seemingly write uh, the book on sex history that has nothing to do with him as a person, even though he is a sexologist, uh, it just feels like perhaps I can't even trust, trust any of this. And 
It's also one of those nonfiction books that doesn't cite any other sources or even have a list of further reading material if you're interested in this more or even trying to sell any of his other books. So yeah, overall it just felt like I was very dependent on this complete stranger who didn't even try to introduce himself, uh, who was clearly very biased. If you've listened to any of my uh, other nonfiction reviews where I talk about what I like and don't like in nonfiction books, you will have already heard of this. So sorry, sorry for the kind of repeat here. That said, if you are interested in a more SJW kind of positive sex uh, space, I would highly recommend the Sex and Disability podcast. And don't forget that like International Men's Day is like November 11th or 13th or something, as that's been a fairly common question uh, in the past couple days as we celebrate International Women's Day. Um, I mean, some people are not worth that answer, but just so you know, there is an International Men's Day and men just literally do nothing for it because they have the world. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.